Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And we are back at the clutter zone. And we're working on the racer's wedge. This, I believe, is part five of our racer's wedge build. And let's get this out of the way. Good. And it's not nearly as far as long as it looks right here. But we do have the the body of the wedge put together and we have this sturdy clothespin holding up back of our frame because as you can see we have no springs or no suspension or anything so the plan is going to be to first of all put together the suspension for our live axle that's this one right here and as I mentioned in the last episode, the rear axle is actually from Revell slash Monogram's uh, Ford Super Duty kit. Just because it was easier to cast a copy of that than the one out of the uh, AMT Econoline. And I also have some leaf springs that were cast from the Econoline kit. And now that one there still has various hanging hardware. This one, I've removed it just because it didn't turn out very well. And I think it'd probably be better if I basically scratch build the hangers to really suit the frame. The, the live axle, the front axle here, is going to have basically a stock suspension. It's going to have leaf springs. The tag axle, which is not powered, it's going to have a very simple axle design. Basically, uh, something similar to what you'd find at the back of a front-wheel drive minivan. It's not going to come from front-wheel drive minivan. It's actually going to be the, the front axle out of a 1940s pickup truck. But it's going to be mounted to the frame basically as a, as a trailing suspension in that we will have... Uh, a mount basically right behind this live axle and then there will be arms going back to that axle and then I'm going to basically model some airbags and if you're confused hopefully you won't be by the time we get it all together so like I said the first thing we got to work on is getting these these front springs mounted before moving on to the next step, I thought I'd clean up my axle a little bit more. It had all kinds of mounting lugs and things like that that were applicable for its intended use. And I felt that these were just going to get in the way. So I ended up just taking a file and cleaning those off. So what I'm going to do is also my leaf springs. I've basically taken all the various mounting lugs off those as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the leaf springs, hopefully in the same plane, onto my axle. I don't know how successful I'm going to be, but I'm going to try to get them basically in the same plane. And then I'm going to mount, or I'm, I'm going to set the frame up so that it's dead level. And that'll give me some idea of where my leaf springs have to glue onto the frame. And then I'll basically scratch build the hardware so that it looks like it should instead of just being a little block of styrene that these things are attached to. One of the things that is visible in this view is I've done a lot of scraping on the sides of the frame basically to clean it up so that I've got a clear area for gluing. And I also filed a little bit more relief into the front of this gap here because my wheelbase is going to be shorter than the van's wheelbase originally was. I know the suspension doesn't have to actually work, but it should look like it could work. That's why all this is now yellow is because I've scraped it and everything to give me nice clean mounting surfaces. As I mentioned earlier, I've got the leaf springs now glued firmly onto the axle. And I managed to get them in the same plane to within probably one or two degrees. So if I basically put it on the, on the workbench, they both touch the ground at the same time. 
And this eliminates a lot of variables. So now I can, I'm not trying to hold two or three things together and in position at the same time when I'm figuring things out. And I also made sure, because of course when I cast, I've only got details on one side that uh, the leaf springs, let's see if we can get a good view here. You can see the individual leaves on the outside, of course on the inside, not so much because they don't exist. I'm doing a little bit of work on the frame here. You can see I've added some little blocks of styrene. Now this one here is red because it's actually from uh, a sign material that came from work. And the ink basically put glue on and it, it just disintegrates anyway. It's not like it protects the plastic. But at any rate, these little blocks that I've put in here, and if we flip it around, you can see that I've also put them on this side here. And all they do is basically restrict where the ends of the leaf springs can go so that I can glue that axle and the leaf springs to the frame and it'll help give it a little bit of support. It'll help to transfer to the, the vertical loads to the frame as I set it down. Once I get that glued in place and the super glue sets up, then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to basically scratch build the spring supports. And at the front, it's basically just going to be a pivot. At the back, it's going to be a shackle. And if you look at the way leaf springs are on vehicles with leaf springs, the generally the front of the leaf spring is fixed. Or, or I should say it's, it's on a pivot so it can do, it can go up and down, but it can't go front to back. At the rear, there has to be a little bit of front and back give because otherwise, even though it's a spring, it would never be able to flex. So that's what we're going to be representing here at the back. Yes, it is finally resting on four wheels. Two more wheels left to install. Now the glue is still setting, so I'm re trying to refrain from picking up and fiddling with it. It's a really short wheelbase, really. Although, by the time we'll put the tag axle on the back, it looks a little bit longer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scratch build the attachment points for the leaf springs here and probably put the shock absorbers in and then I'm going to turn my attention to building the tag axle here. But I want to get all this in first before I start fooling around with the tag axle. Yay! We finally have, well we can't really call it a rolling chassis because these wheels are never going to roll. But at least we have our four main wheels on. I'm going to do a little bit of detailing, as I said, on the ends of the leaf springs, and then I'm going to start working on that tag axle. Nice to see it finally get to this stage. A few people have asked me about how I'm going to do the tag axle on our racer's wedge, and I don't know exactly how MPC had it arranged. The original underframe of the uh, 70 actually originally it was a 68 uh, Chevy GMC pickup truck. The original floor plan was pretty primitive. Um, and what I've heard is that you just basically cut a part of it off and I think they had another part that clipped on. At any rate, what I'm planning on doing is I needed to come up with a suspension that was not going to interfere with the stock Ford suspension with the leaf springs and everything like that because I figured the guys building this would have wanted to keep that. So I thought what's about the most simple axle you can have and pretty much the axle off the back of a minivan would actually fit the bill but of course there's no parts to copy like that. However the 41 Chevy pickup truck by Revell I took a look at the front axle from it and here's the front axle. Now I've added a little piece of styrene in here. I can pop that out later when I actually go to use it. But I added that when I was making my mold. And here's the mold right here. And this is the part that came out of the mold. Now basically this is going to be, it's not going to use leaf springs or coil springs. 
what I'm going to do is these wide areas here, as I try to focus, these wide areas here, I'm going to use those for mounting a set of airbags. And in terms of locating it to the chassis, I'm going to have a couple of arms coming from right about here, going to just behind the live axle, probably on a couple of posts that hang down. And that way the whole thing can uh, basically go up and down and be hinged off the frame. And it has the advantage of the airbags, the people who made this vehicle could, depending on how it was riding and how the traction on their live axle was being affected, they could increase or decrease the pressure in the airbags. So I'm not sure how clear this is. Hopefully once we get it together, it will be a lot more obvious, but at least this is where the tag axle came from. It's off of a 41 Chevy pickup truck. There's our last set of wheels glued onto our tag axle slash front axle. That is, it used to be a front axle off of a 41 Chevy. And now it's going to be our tag axle. And basically these thick areas here are where we're going to be mounting our airbags to. In this shot, we can see our front axle, which is permanently installed. And then basically where the tag axle is going to be installed, plus or minus a couple millimeters here. And you can see the leaf springs, which locate the front axle. And you can see the, the wider pads back here where the airbags are going to go. And then there's going to have to be some sort of structure built out from the sides of the frame for the airbags to bear on. And then just behind our live axle, there's going to have to be a structure coming down that basically an arm can come out to this axle to keep it in place. Like I said, I'm not sure if the proper term is a trailing uh, arm design, but Basically, the, the horizontal loads are going to be taken by the arms coming from here back. And of course, the, the vertical loads are going to be taken by the airbags. I've been struggling for a while to figure out what I was going to use to represent the airbags, uh, ranging from uh, laminating a bunch of pieces of plastic together, together and then turning them down um, to possibly molding something. And then I noticed these little, these little nubbies here, they actually came from a foot massager rack. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the bottoms here and then hopefully file the bottoms to create kind of like a very short, fat um, capsule shape, I guess. Kind of look like a, like a short minion shape, I guess. But at any rate, that will hopefully represent the airbags. So I'm pretty much done filing the one on the left. The one on the right, I still have to round off the bottom or the top, depending on how you want to look at it. So I've got my airbags mounted on the axle or wood bags, I guess, since they're actually made out of wood. But I'm assuming once I give them a nice coat of uh, German gray, they will look like airbags. So now I can figure out um, my mounting pads on the frame, I can get that right. Cause I want to get this mounted before I actually put the arms on that'll, that'll go to the, to the frame. So I finally have gotten my leaf spring, uh, hardware all done. And it's a simple pinned connection here. And at the back, it's a shackle. And then that way, Obviously, as the leaf spring changes length as it flexes, this is able to, to flex. And that's usually represented in most models. Of course, I don't have those parts anymore. You can see it here on the other side. Now, I was thinking of putting two separate pads in here for the, uh, the airbags to rest on. And I thought, you know what, probably the simplest solution and one that our, our intrepid wedge builders would have used is just simply put a beefy cross member across and then have the 
uh, airbags bearing on that. So I'm going to actually glue the axle with the airbags on here and then I'm actually going to build the arms that goes forward to the frame. Okay, we're getting close to all the bits of engineering we need here. This structure and this structure are the supports that are going to basically hold the arms that will locate our tag axle back here. So you can see there's a little stub sticking out here and that in fact would be hinged. I'll put a couple of pins to represent whatever sort of bolt or pin arrangement there is. And then I'm going to use a piece of styrene rod to go from here to the axle. And the idea is, is uh, horizontally the axle is located by these these two arms here, thus a trailing arm arrangement. And I'm probably calling it the wrong thing. And then the airbags give us our, our vertical control. Okay, so at last we have the major components of the rear suspension in place. The original live axle with leaf springs, and then the tag axle, which has airbags, and trailing arm suspensions to basically keep it in place. Now I'm also going to add some shock absorbers as well. That'll be the next step. And I think I might put a diagonal control or sway bar from here to here just to make sure that this would stay parallel because I can see cornering forces tending to want to make that do this. That's the sort of thing I can see them having in there as well. Here are the shock absorbers for the front. And they're basically being sandwiched between the, uh, the spring perch and the, the lower control arm. I know they should have a little bit more detail on them than this, but quite frankly, I think you're barely going to be able to see that they're there in the first place. So I'm just going to glue them in like this. So there's our front shock absorbers mounted and they're mounting to the to the proper location at the top but in reality they should go to a mounting I believe that's at the bottom of the control arm. However because of my probably imperfect casting techniques that geometry isn't going to quite work out so I took the the cheater way out and I just brought it down to the top of the control arm itself. But I don't think it's going to be noticeable once we get it all together. The main thing is, is when you look in there, you're going to be able to see a shock absorber basically in the right place. Because let's recall that the enemy of good is better. These are the shock absorbers for the live axle. Now, I've cut the, the upper part at an angle just to make it a little bit easier to mount on the frame cross member. But I have tried to represent the... Uh, the mounting that would normally be like a, there'd be a bolt going through there. I did try to, mo to model that. Okay, it is about 12 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. And I've just done most of the editing of this particular episode. When I got home from work this morning, I kind of immediately sat down at the hobby bench to start mounting as you can see there there's the shock absorbers for the the live axle and if i flip it around you can see the shock absorbers for our tag axle right there and as promised, I put a diagonal in. Make sure we can focus on it here. There's a diagonal going from this arm to this arm. And that basically converts it from a big rectangle that's uh, prone to twisting to two triangles, which would maintain its geometry. So... Like I said, I've got this episode pretty much all edited. I did not get nearly as much done 
this week as I wanted to. Jeez, I mean, some YouTubers build cars in a week. Anyway, this is about all I'm going to do for this week. At least we have all six wheels mounted. And the next step is going to be to mount our engine and extend our frame. But that will be for another episode. And as well as that, we'll get it all painted up. So until next time, thanks for watching and keep on modeling.